Okay guys, so um, welcome back. So we're now into session three of our, our little time together here in terms of Hamlet session one, complete, comparative intro and comparative part one, which was session two, now complete. And now we're on to session three, our second part of the comparative. The reason why you might ask, like why are we spending so much time on the comparative? Well, you'll have a look, session four and five, poetry, 17.5% and session two and three, comparative 17.5%, Hamlet 15%. So in terms of percentage breakdowns, one, it warrants the little extra bit of time as well, but the comparative itself is such a, uh, I suppose a behemoth, it's such a big task to take on that it needs and, and they warrants uh, that extra little bit of attention, okay? I'm gonna try and slow it down a little bit because obviously in the last uh, session, session two, we spoke a hell of a lot about our structure, about linking our texts together. You'll hear me talk about that as well a lot in this session too, going from the first text, finding similarities, comparisons, second text, and then on into the third similarities and, and differences in the second text. What, what I have now in front of you here, guys, in the two boards, and this is where we're gonna start, is this is our structure, all right? And I've tried to lay it out as best I can. I'll get a different marker there so that we can see what we're doing. In terms of our introduction, okay, this is our intro, and then what I'll do is I'll go through, this is our potential point, either point by point kind of structure or our paragraphing structure, okay? But if we start here, go to our intro, as said, in terms of session two, whenever you watched it, uh, in terms of we said it's about a half an A4 page, probably three quarters of an A4 page, considering the amount we need to get done within our introduction, we're going to try and include a hook, of which in today's session, I will show you a couple of examples and exemplar material of that hook. We're going to try and include that thesis. We're gonna try and answer our question. We're gonna use the LOQ for that, make it very obvious to the examiner what specific parts of the question we're answering and when. Make sure you define the mode as discussed. I have those definitions in there for you. They are at the very beginning of each individual breakdown uh, at the start of literary genre, theme and issue and cultural context, you have your definitions. Very important to define the mode. I will actually just say on that, on these two points here, the LOQ, make sure to go back to the mode of comparison constantly as well. Don't just mention literary genre at the beginning in your introduction and negate then or neglect to use that later on in the answer. Make sure that you're answering it or using that uh, language within your answer kind of consistently, okay? Make sure you mention your three texts and your authors within your introduction at the very beginning. I had a student of mine a number of years ago ended up getting the H1, was very, very capable, very competent, and what he used to do, I didn't love it, but again, he got the H1, so who am I to argue with it? But what he would do is, at the very beginning of a comparative essay, he would just literally put in a very, very small paragraph right at the start, there are the three texts and there are the three authors, and then he would move on to his introduction. It's absolutely fine. It allowed for that conversational flow that we're always looking for. So in that sense, I did really like it, but I didn't like the fact that it was separate because I think it's a, a perfect opportunity to kind of amalgamate them into your introduction. Either way is a short answer. It doesn't matter as long as we mention them. This, as you know at this stage, from our little work on Hamlet, from session two in terms of the beginning of our comparative, I am obsessed with this technique. I think it is arguably the best thing that you can do within an introduction. Tell the examiner the three or four areas of focus you're going to use. I'm aware that there's four things here. And it says rule of three. Again, I know I'm not a maths teacher, but I, it doesn't matter. Again, if you have two, three, four things, it still becomes the rule of three, okay? And you tell the examiner that, say, for example, in your cultural context question, you're going to look at the significant role wealth plays, gender role, setting, and family in order to see how all of those things impact upon our central characters, okay? It's a fantastic technique to use. It lends itself to that blueprint idea that we've been constantly talking about in all these little video sessions. Make sure that we're doing this throughout impact our thoughts and our feelings as discussed, okay? And finally, a little mini conclusion, a nice succinct conclusion at the end there, almost that your introduction could be taken by itself, like completely, like it's a little work uh, in and of itself. So just have a little final conclusion there that just kind of wraps up, you know, the, the, your introductory material, okay? Uh, and that's a really, really nice way to go about your introduction. Again, as I said in the Hamlet session, as I will say in the poetry sessions, 
stick to the formula, tick these boxes, it becomes very easy to code, very easy to give you a good grade, okay? In terms of our FAR board here, in terms of this board, in terms of our point by point and our paragraphing, all right? So in terms of whether we are on a new point or whether we're on a new paragraph, the structure doesn't tend to change massively. However, some of the language we use might. So if we are dealing with a paragraph that is simply moving on and simply adding to a point that we're making, well, then we bring in a huge amount of linking language as discussed in session two. Guys, you now have, this is why we do everything in session two leading on to session three, because you now have all that information. You can now start to implement this blueprint at home when you're writing these essays. So if we're on a new paragraph, but we're remaining on the same point, as said, we are using our linking language, okay? This is similar to, or in text two, this is completely different, all right? Or text three stands in marked contrast to whatever. That's the type of linking lines we're looking at, all right? And that's if it's a new paragraph, but remaining on the same point. If it is a new paragraph and a completely new point, you've dealt with your area of focus, you've dealt with a wealth, for example, that's complete, and you're now moving on to gender roles, wealth already done. Well, then it's a, it's a topic sentence that we begin with. Because that means it's a new paragraph, and as you can see there, I've underlined it, a new point in and of itself, okay? So then we include topic sentences. Like, for example, gender roles also play a significant, uh, a signi or play, are a significant factor in determining our characters, or play a significant factor in the cultural context of all three of my texts. Something along those lines as a little topic sentence, okay? You then bring in your text and your author, you bring in your key moment or key moments. This was something mentioned at the very beginning of session two, guys. If you feel like it is relevant to mention two moments per text in one of your points, that's an excellent thing to do as well. Especially if a character changes from the very beginning to the very end. You go back here in terms of wealth, or even gender roles. How do women behave at the beginning of a doll's house? How does Nora behave as a female at the beginning of a doll's house versus how does she end, or how does she behave at the end of the text, okay? And that will be very pertinent and excellent thing to mention there as well, okay? Constantly linking to our language of the question, bring that in as we go. Constantly referencing, guys, you'll remember from session two, as I said, quotes, are now your friend, bring those elements in, bring a little bit of quotation into your answer, and then we are concluding the points, all right? Or if you are continuing on, if this is one of our beginning paragraphs or even middle paragraph, well, then you leave it open-ended and you bring in linking language, all right? And you talk about, as we said, you allude to text to, so to speak, you allude to the next text that you're going to talk about, all right? Bring in that linking language, bring in the links, all right? 